Hello and welcome to the next video of my Worlds 2022 preview series where we cover all 24 teams heading to Worlds 2022 in the LOL esports space. Um, today we have CTBC Flying Oyster, the silliest name outside of Unicorns of Love that I can think of off the top of my head. Um, they are the PCS representatives, they are the first seed. Um, now, down in the description you're going to see three links, Twitter, Discord, and YouTube memberships. Twitter, self-explanatory, follow me there so I can spread my wings on Twitter. And, um, you know, I post the links to the videos there. So if you want to follow along there to get regular updates, you can. Um, Discord, Discord's active, very active actually. Usually there's always a conversation going on and definitely during games there are conversations going on. Um, there is a predictions channel where we're going to do, where we've been doing predictions all throughout summer and um playoffs where we keep track of predictions and and um i think steven dreesen um won the playoffs he locked up the playoff um section of the predictions i believe that i know i'm in second and i don't think i can catch up to them in next weekend they're that far ahead um 84 correct so far for the playoffs um there's also going to be three different things we're going to do for Worlds. I'm going to do the predictions. I'm going to do a pickums before it starts for everybody. And then also do something else. So if you join the Discord, you might be able to participate in things like that. Um, lastly, YouTube memberships. $3 and $10. $3 is just to support me and help me continue this channel. Um, we have like five or six people on um you know subscription member joined as a member of some kind and i really do appreciate you for doing so um if you join the ten dollar tier you will get free well not free it's not free extra content um regarding fantasy football nfl football and my predictions before the day before the games occur i put out a video with my predictions on who i think is going to win um and the over under for total amount of kills per game if you want um that for esports gambling betting purposes so that's all out of the way you're here for ctbc flying oyster so um yeah pcs tends to be really good uh this week i'm going to watch cfo versus beyond gaming um beyond gaming ended up being the second seed um which we'll do another day i don't know if it's going to be tomorrow or later in the week um but i gotta watch that i have not watched cfo play really at all I was banking on PSG coming through, and PSG did not. PSG and J-Team are not going to Worlds. I want to actually look back to when the last time this happened was. It was probably only a couple years ago, but I'm really interested to see how how often one of those two teams have been at an international event. Um, because, I mean, this is a brand new team relatively. I feel like it's an older team. Like, the core of this team is been around with each other so i think like it changed hands you know sponsorships and whatever because i believe ctbc might be a bank um i don't know how flying oyster works into it maybe it's a fast food chain i don't know um the pcs is hong kong taiwan and macau i believe um i apologize if i'm missing somebody in there um but nevertheless um that is the area so uh, Aki is the coach. Aki uh, has been to Worlds once as a player in 2014. He was a top laner and they went 1-5 and five that time. The last three uh, instances for the PCS 1 seed in Worlds 2019 would finish 3rd in their group. 2020 finished last in their group. And 2021 3rd in their group. So that was the deal. Usually the, um, one, the PCS 1 seed does struggle and finish in the bottom half of group stage um, but they are competitive they've been widely considered the top minor region i think that they will be challenged this time around by vcs but i think that's because i do feel like ctbc is a little bit weaker than what we've seen psg lately with river doggo maple hanabi and kai kai wing i mean a few of those players are now at, in minor uh are in major regions right two of them are well three of them river maple three of them river maple and uh, doggo so top lane we have rest rest put up good stats in the pcs playoffs this team statistically really looked very good um 5.8 kda 8.6 cs per minute 58.9 kp 58.9 kp is a little lower than we've been seeing is it like spring no spring we were people were in the high 40s and we considered 58% to be more of a uh, team fighter than 
split pusher, but in this meta, that's more split push. Like 60% is usually where we're getting people now. 25-2 damage share is very high. Very high for a top laner. Um, this team's damage um, distribution is a bit concerning, which we'll get into. So 25.2587. So he's a carry top laner. Um, gets ahead in lane more often than not. Had nine solo kills in 16 games. So he has the potential to really go off in lane and also pick people off and do do that. I mean, nine solo kills. That's the most I think so far um, out of anybody in doing this. Um, and played seven champions in 16 games. So I think he played four like Nar, Aatrox, and Sejuani. I think that's possible. Um, don't, I mean, I'm not 100% certain, but I know the distribution of champions. There were three that he played four times. Um, Worlds 2019, he finished in um, 2019. He was on the one seed. They would finish ninth, 12th. Um, he went three and three that tournament, which is good. That means they took off a, a win off of a major region. 1.83 KDA, 7.64 CS per minute, 60.6 KP. Um, I would like to see think that based on his stats now, he's better than he was then. Um, 7.64 is definitely lower. Um, you know, you're kind of used to that with minor regions though, especially given the fact that he's only been in Worlds groups. So he didn't get to pad his stats against lower tier minor regions. Gemini in the jungle. I've known of Gemini um, before this. Three of these five players I've heard of before. Um, Gemini 4.1 uh, KDA, 4.8 CS per minute, 65.5 KP. So not really farming as much as you'd like and not getting enough KP. And the way I always go about this, I say it pretty much every episode, but I have fans from these teams coming here and watching it. Um, I believe like five to five and a half. I think I'm going to start lowering it to maybe five and a quarter. Shoot, I keep hitting the box in front of me. But five and a quarter for the average. Um, and 70% is still the average for KP. Because you have to either be farming or making something happen. And if your KP is not high and your farm isn't high, what are you doing? You could be creating pressure. And that is something that I can't see with stats. So comment down below if you are a fan of CFO and give us a vibe of what you offer um but that's kind of what i'm getting he's not farming at a high rate and he's not really creating as much as you would like 13.4 damage here 311 um damage per minute that's pretty standard in this meta however he is ahead at 15 minutes all of these players are ahead at 15 minutes they are an early game team that gets ahead and then they win so in this meta that's not common a lot of people like to scale where this team might be the type that gets in your face. Um, three solo kills, five champions in 16 games. I believe um, Wukong might have been his most played. 2017, he was a substitute and played one game as the team that he was on did not get out of uh, play-in. So it was the two seed. Worlds 2020, he would finish last on the one seed in um, group, group stage. He went one and six. 1.43 KDA, 4.86 CS per minute, 71.9 KP in his looks. So he made things happen relative to the amount of kills his team had. But um, farm really wasn't there and KDA really wasn't there as he struggled. Along with the rest of his team when he had a shot at um, Worlds. Mission in mid lane definitely is their best player. Looking at their stats, 5.3 KDA. 9.1 CS per minute in mid is cracked. Um, 8.5 to 9 is like, 8.5 is good. Like 8.5 is like, okay, you're good in lane. You're solid in lane. 9.1 means you're very good in lane. Like this guy, I don't think is going to get behind. Um, 30, uh, 67.8 KP, which is actually pretty solid given that he's farming as much. He's not in the side lane, you know, t with TP ready or... Um, just sitting in his lane farming and taking down turret plates. He's making things happen. Actually, more so than the jungler. 33.9 damage share, 784 damage per, 782 damage per minute. He's ahead of 15 minutes, 5 solo kills, 4 champions in 16 games. The shocking number in that, shocking numbers are damage related. 33.9 damage share. That is carry numbers. Those are carry numbers. You do not see mid laners with 34% damage share in this meta. You really don't. 
Um, he played Victor seven times in 16 games, which is a ton. When you think about it, how many people are playing a ton of Victor? Not really. It's like a fringe meta pick right now. And playing it that often is definitely interesting to think about that this team might have its own identity going into Worlds for better or for worse. People could say, oh, Victor sucks. Well, it's an identity nonetheless that they're picking something no one else is really. Um, 782 damage per minute is very high. We don't see that in solo lanes. Over such a um, over such an amount of games, over 16 games. Um, five solo kills is definitely solid. These players do get aggressive and take advantage of you if you are um, possibly to be picked. In Worlds 2017, he would finish 17th, 20th, not getting out of uh, plans. Worlds 2019... Uh, last in his group, Worlds 2020, last in his group. Uh, mission is 10 and 18 at these events, dominating play-ins. And um, maybe one of these, I think, uh, Worlds 2019, he got out of play-ins. I think that's why his stats are good. Um, that's why he's 10 and 18, despite finishing last place twice. Um 133 KDA is concerning. That is very low. That means he dies a lot at these events. Uh, maybe it's disrespectful because 8.89 CS per minute, 54 2 KP. So he's not really getting involved in fights all that much, which would explain the low K KDA. I mean, 54 KP is a lot lower than his 67.8 he has right now. You don't often see 54s in mid lane. Um, that's, that's very low. Um, and I think there is potential that they're, I mean, a player could disrespect the opponent. They're so used to dominating lane in their region. They go international and they consistently get ganked, get camped, and get taken advantage of because they're so used to playing their lane straight up. And internationally, that's not going to happen, especially given that I can see that he might be their best player. Other teams obviously see that and they're going to go after him. Um, so that's a thing. Shun in bot lane. There's Shun and Atlan. Shun has been playing lately, although he's listed as the sub. On Leakpedia, I'm not making the same mistake I did with Shogun in MSI. I looked it up, and Shun's been playing all the playoff games, so I'm going to assume he's the starter. Both very young. I think Shun is actually a rookie. Um, 5.8 KDA, 9.1 CS per minute, 66.7 KP, so that's lower than you want, 9.1. Um, 10 is good. Especially in a major, a minor region when you're going to an international event, you have to be dominant in your lane to really, like, I'm saying Mission and Gemini, uh, I mean, Mission and Rust, both are high CS numbers. Like, they're getting a lot of farm. And maybe Shun is giving it up to them a bit, but the fact is, this meta is a bot lane meta. You need to be very good in bot lane to succeed, I think. Um, and not only that, a 19.8 damage share, 463 damage per minute, that is concerningly low. I understand Mission is at 33.9, but 463 damage per minute is very low. That is low. Um, and I looked at his champion pool. Um, on average, he's ahead of 15 minutes, two solo kills, and five champions in 16 games. Most played was a Felios. Um, it's not like he has Senna games in there to like lower his numbers or Seraphine or, or whatever. Like he, he's a rookie. I think that this, that's a thing. Um, it kind of rolls and segues right into Koala. Koala is a veteran. I know of Koala seeing him play at international events in the past. Um, definitely, I would consider him the second best support in PCS behind Kai Wing. Um, I don't expect him to look out of place at Worlds. He, I'd consider him world class. You probably haven't heard my description of world class. World class does not mean top 10 in the world. That means when you go to an international event, you don't look out of place. Um, you show up, no matter who you're against, you show up and you don't look like you don't belong there. Um, Koala 5.9 KDA, 71.4 KP, clears one ward every three minutes and drops a ward every other minute. Six champions in 16 games, including an Ash game. Um, Worlds 2018 finished last in his group. Worlds 2019 would finish third. Worlds 2020 last in his group. He is 11 and 15 at international events. One and 1.19 KDA, which is very low, and 64.9 KP. So. His team's not a lot of kills in their games, um, playing very slow macro-based League of Legends and on Struggle Street because of it. Um, when I count assists as half and your team doesn't get a lot of kills 
and you're the support. You're going to die quite a bit. Koala, most played, was Nautilus in playoffs. That is interesting, to say the least. Um, I think seven games of Nautilus in 16. Um, this is not an engaged meta right now. Hopefully it turns into an engaged meta. Hopefully the scrim meta forms at Worlds and it becomes engaged. Engage is much more interesting than what we're dealing with right now. Um, and you'll see that in my 12.14 video later today. That's the second video where I break down patch 12.14 looking back at what the most common matchups were you see a lot of yumi nami lulu right and we've seen that for a while and we continue to see it on 12 15 as lec and lcs still have to finish playing and honestly it might not change that but we're hoping it does and in koala's case he's a veteran playing nautilus maybe that sparks some interest from other teams and uh, makes you know the meta shift a bit i don't expect the pcs to determine the meta but scrim meta might just you know spread slowly you know and by the end of by the end of worlds maybe we have an engage meta right um but that is it for ctbc flying oyster comment down below if you're a fan of cfo or the pcs and give us a bit of insight on what this team has to offer um you're going to see a playlist pop around me eventually where uh, you can click on it and go to my world's 2022 playlist where i go over all the teams um, over the last several days you can go through them if you'd like um, subscribe to the channel do the three links down in the description for twitter discord and becoming a member and thank you for watching